Hey everybody, welcome to Brown's Family Homestead. In this video, it's processing day for our 45 Cornish Cross chickens. It's the last batch of the year. So a couple weeks back, if you guys are new to our channel, we made a video of processing our very first batch of meat chickens ourselves. So our very first batch we did ourselves, our second batch we sent to a processing facility, and then our third batch in this video, we kind of combine both. So if you're curious what that looks like, keep on watching. And my husband has a little bit of a segment in this where he's gonna talk about our experience with our birds, why we did it ourselves, why we're sending them to a facility, why we're kind of doing both at the same time. It's kind of like a big old experiment, but we're here to help you guys if you're curious if DIY seems a little too intense and overwhelming or sending them to a facility might be a little bit daunting or kind of ruin the whole experience for you. We are mixing the two together and hopefully you like it and you find this helpful. So let's get started. It's processing day. Let's go. These are chicken crates for transporting chickens. And we use that to bring them to the butcher. And we're kind of on a time crunch. Where did you get these crates from? Uh, Stromberg's chickens. And it's a lot better than using dog oh, crates. Man, it is like night and day difference. <laughs> One thing about these that we met, the reason why we're going so quick on these is because we're just looking at one that we had before. But if you ever buy these, make sure you're paying attention because we put some panels on wrong and it took a long time and some unique things to get them out of their snaps. It was really, really tough. It was not fun at all. So make sure you do it right. Yep. They get a little shy towards the end because they are coming to the realization of what's happening. So we have to get some food and we sprinkle a little bit so I don't have to crawl underneath here. Next year, we're not gonna have this chicken tractor. We're gonna have more of an A-line so we can just walk in and grab them instead of having to get on all fours. <laughs> so and just gonna go get some food, sprinkle it, and hopefully they come eat so I can grab them easily. Okay, what are we doing? You're getting in there to get them. I don't want to. There's a couple stragglers left. It's all muddy and poopy. Okay. It's gross. 
It's like extra wet outside. Okay, here we go. Oh, it's pretty bad. <laughs> yeah. Ugh. Oh, I just got something in my eye. Oh. oh. I feel like I'm bigger this time. <laughs> You got it, you got it, you got it. Wow, that one's really. Ow! That's... You see that metal? Yeah. <laughs> How many left is there? One. Oh, just one? Oh, we're fine. <laughs> okay, but this is the run. This is the run of the This pack. is the. Mom, come on, we this is the road runner. Okay. Mason, count to 20. You think I can get it in 20 seconds? One, two, three, four, five, six. She's a, she's a trooper. Wow. Just perfect. Perfect execution. 20. Perfect execution. Okay. I don't want to do that again. I know. We're not going to have to. Here you go. Mason's okay. disgusted by my knees. Let's go. Come on. All in a day's work. You like chicken? <laughs> well, one just squirted poop all over me. Made the nastiest sound. Getting them ready to go to the facility. Okay. Bye bye. Last batch of the year. Last batch of the year. 46 Cornish Cross. The facility is about an hour away, and our oldest is going with them. where we've gotten our chickens from. All of our chickens, our meat chickens, and our laying hens are all from Meyer Hatchery. We have purchased over 200 chickens from Meyer Hatchery all out of pocket. So sometimes when you're on YouTube, you don't know who's getting paid to say what, and I just wanted to be transparent and say all of these birds, even in this video, like have been paid through out of pocket. So we did recently become brand ambassadors with Meyer Hatchery, so that's exciting, but I just wanted to say up until this point, we have just loved the company and it's been a, a pure thing. <laughs> um, if you have had some bad experiences with other companies, Meyer Hatchery is great to check out. Or if you're new and you don't even know where to start, Meyer Hatchery is a great place to start. So I'm going to include a discount code on the screen and I'll also include one in the description so you can copy and paste it and it can be quick. And it'll give you some money at checkout. All right, for the people that are curious, why have we done processing ourselves and then why are we taking it to a facility this time and what are we doing differently with the facility? The facility is pretty reasonable with price so we just tried it out um, you know if you have five people there help or let's say it's me and you know you and I and then three other people helping in our station to process ourselves those three people expect something usually um, we have a, a few people that would never expect anything, but that can't continue like that. We're kind of looking at it as a small little side business. So those people expect some sort of you know return, whether it's whether it's a bird, whether it's a couple birds, or um, you know a dollar amount or anything like that. So we're trying to compare: is it worth it for us to bring in a couple more people and spend the entire day doing processing ourselves? and tying up our whole day when either I can go out and make quite a bit more money on my own or, you know, is it worth the experience doing the processing um, just, just to kind of have it come full circle. I think that kind of wears off a little bit. Um, so we decided to try someone else processing and we did, there were some positives and some negatives. We're actually picking up our last batch from that same processor today. So we're going to see how the quality is this time. The quality was fine. But we just, we would have done things a little bit different as far as some packaging things and items like that. But um, the price is good and the price comes out to, I think, quite a bit cheaper than 
if we were to do it ourselves, if you were to put a dollar amount on how much you're worth personally per hour and what your people that you bring in are worth. So it's a, it's a 45 minute drive to this processing facility, um, which I'm driving a nine mile per gallon truck. So it all does add up, but just the, the fact that you're not messing with any kind of set, setting up, tearing down, washing, um, finding people. Yeah. Trying to find people that's not going to back out last second. Um, all that stuff is like super, like everything's got to line up and a lot of the times it doesn't. And if you're, you know, once in a while, if you're looking to make like one event a year and, you know, be generous and give birds away and things like that, I think it's perfect and it sounds fun. But if you're looking to do like, we're looking to scale up a little bit next year and, you know, let's say we're doing 150 birds at one time and we do three, three batches next summer. I mean, that's 450 birds and that excitement's going to wear off for some people and they're going to be like, okay, I'm not even into that anymore. Like I'm busy doing something else. So we're just trying to look at the big picture and say, what's sustainable? What can we turn into a, a actual process that we can um, expect every time and not have to bring in someone new every time to uh, train and things like that? Because you spend half the day telling people you know, tips and tricks on how to do things more efficiently and then they might never come back. So And so this time we are what they we're getting everything in whole whole yeah, birds. Yeah, we're getting whole birds and then we're gonna have one of our good friends come over and because uh, we've never done this so he's gonna show us how to like quarter up a bird with you know breasts and legs and thighs and wings and things like that. Um, and then we're actually gonna use our vacuum sealer and, and vacuum seal. We're not selling any of these birds we're gonna we are going to give a few away to to this person that's helping us. But other than that, we're going to keep all these just for the winter since it was our last batch. Um, so we're going to get them in a, in a more um, easy to use, easy to rip open. Because, like, you know, we, we buy a couple packs of chicken a week. And we would love to just have... It's a little bit more difficult for us to get motivated to thaw out a whole bird. Mm -hmm. um, and cook it for our family, get the crock pot out, get all, all these recipes when we could just tear open a couple packages of breasts and cook them for two days. Um, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to kind of part them up and see how that goes. And not only for us, but we were convinced that like our generation is more along the same thinking as us. Like, what do I do with a whole bird? I would rather like, I know what to do with chicken breasts or I know what to do with wings. Um, if they want that, then, then we'll do that and it's going to be more money, but, um, I think it looks cleaner. Um, and I, I think it will sell better than a whole bird. So, so we're just going to, we're just going to test the theory out. Yeah. So some upcoming videos that we have regarding meat chickens is our first batch of meat birds was 25 rainbow rangers. And then we went right into the Cornish cross breed. And so Ange has all the stats down and a whiteboard in our chicken coop. And so our next videos are going to be how much feed each breed went through, just like the death rate of each type of bird and which ones we prefer. So if you guys are interested in that, that's gonna be coming up in the next video or two. But for now, uh, Ange is gonna go pick up the chicken soon and he might come home with a cow, which is a whole different, a whole different story and a whole different video. So stay tuned to see that, but right now we're gonna go cut up some chicken. Get rid of this, this goes to stock. This goes to stock. This goes for your wing party. Leg. Do some drumsticks for the kids. Scale. 
I want to weigh this one. One pound exactly. Wow. That's it. <laughs> so was it worth it to hire out processing chickens and then coming home and then cutting them? I don't know. All I know is it was a lot better than processing uh, and doing this. That would have been just a long day. I bet Everything ourselves, he's saying. And this was only 50. 45. 45. So imagine if we wanted to do 150 or something next year. That is just going to be, that would be impossible. Yeah. Unless you had like a big army of people. So we've tried processing ourselves. We have a whole video on that if you want to go see that. And last time we had our birds processed and they gave us like a variety pack of the meat and whole birds. We didn't really like the variety pack of the meat. So this is why we're cutting so them up. thrown together. Yeah, it just didn't look appetizing. So this is why we cut them up. So now I'm going to go to the fridge, the freezer. I'm going to show you what everything looks like. Excuse the mess. Like these were some big birds for us. And then this is what they look like, individually packed. So a lot better. And I feel so good that I can just pop in the freezer when I want to make thighs one night or wings one night or get some chicken breasts. It's just, it's already done. I don't have to rip open a random pack of a bunch of different cuts, you know? So what a win. I didn't want to forget this freezer too. So we have this full of meat as well. Processing, processing chickens is kind of wild, I don't know. It always feels a little weird. This is our third round doing it. And it's like you spend every day waking up, pulling the tractor, feeding and watering, and then removing any feed if you have to at night, every single day for nine, well, eight to 10 weeks, depending on what breed you have. And then it's like one day you just drop them off somewhere or you process them yourselves and your chicken tractor is empty, but your freezer's full. And it's such a good feeling because that night, that night, it's like, we don't really have chores to do tonight besides our laying hens, which is nice. Um, so yeah, our freezer's full, it feels really good. And our next upcoming videos are going to be whether we prefer Rainbow Rangers and Cornish Cross between those two that we've tried and just the stats on them and figuring out which one was more profitable and is it worth it if it is more profitable, just kind of that video to help some other people out um, because we're newbies as well and we're just, we learned a lot this year. And next year is going to be a minimum of 50 birds. So this year we did 25 and then 50 and then another 50. And then next year is going to be a minimum of 50. And we're going to go up to 100, 150, depending on what we feel comfortable with. But yeah, if you haven't seen our video before this, we did do a video of us processing our first batch ever. Um, we processed them on our own. Our next batch, we just sent them to a facility. They did everything. This video, we kind of did both. So we sent them and then we kind of finished it off. So I hope this was helpful for anybody considering meat chickens or you just found it entertaining because it is, it is kind of wild. If you're not into this life, it's very interesting, but we're into it and we love it. So uh, we make videos every single week. So we hope you like this video. Subscribe if you're new and like and comment. It helps our channel a lot. So thanks for watching. Bye.